Hello everybody and welcome to Amber World. I know you are all wondering who my guest today is. Let's keep the suspense a little bit. No, I can't wait. <laughs> okay, everybody, welcome Ms. Odike to the show, Nollywood Hat Drop. Ms. Odike, welcome to Amber World. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> okay, yeah, people, I know it's been a long time you've seen my face, but it's all good. I have one of the finest actors in Hollywood here with me. And we are going to... I'll take Hollywood. I'll take Hollywood. Did I say Hollywood? Yes, because you oh, are seeing my, my yeah. future. Yes, yes. You are seeing my future. I'll take it. I'm manifesting. <laughs> Thank you. You're seeing my future. I love it. Okay. On the show with us. Okay, I'm going to ask you how and when did you fall in love with showbiz? Um, show business has been a thing for me ever since I was young because my mom teaches drama and literature. So, um, and also I've always been attracted to the arts. Uh, it's, it's not today or yesterday. It's been a while. I've been, um, I've been in plays since I was young. I've been writing for, um, I've been writing stories. I've been writing music for the very longest time. So okay. it's been a while. Okay. So how did your journey begin? How? In Nollywood? Yes. Uh, in Nollywood. I was in Abuja working as a lawyer. No, no, not really in Nollywood, in Nollywood. showbiz. In showbiz. I'm, I'm sure you did um, other things before you got to acting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In showbiz, um, I moved to Lagos hoping to get my start as an actor. Okay. But um, I had different pit stops before I was really able to, you know, I had a job as a presenter. I was a producer as well. I had a job as, um, I worked in, <laughs> I worked in building furniture as well. So oh, wow. um, just, you know, trying to sustain myself while I was going for auditions and oh, okay. um, just doing the basic Nollywood things. So that's how I got started. You know, when I had the job, I was going for auditions and trying to act on the side and doing things like that. And eventually um, it came through. So, yeah. Okay. How, how, how um, difficult was this journey? Oh, you know what it is. It's, it's, it's terribly difficult. I went for, I'm not even exaggerating when I say I went for over 100 auditions. And wow. as in, I have been to over 100 auditions in my career. And um, yeah, you know, some you go, before you even let a word out of your mouth, you say, thank you, next. <laughs> uh, some you go, you think you've crushed the audition and you yeah. don't get a call back. And it just, I went for a lot of auditions. I actually took the, the real routes of yeah. uh, you know i didn't have anybody to saw who just saw mm -hmm. me and thought oh this guy can act so oh, let's put him i really went for auditions i like started from the ground level up so yeah okay over 100 auditions i am telling you the truth if i to calculate all the auditions <laughs> i've been through over 100 and i'm sure no like cap. over 50 percent no at the time yeah when i started going to auditions you know being a new face uh, nobody knows who you are, nobody, yeah. uh, who's this new guy, you know, mm -hmm. I just moved to Lagos, mm -hmm. I didn't have any family, friends in entertainment, nothing. Wow. So yeah, at the time it was, um, it wasn't the easiest, yes, a lot of no's. Yeah, so what kept you going? I mean, why didn't you give up? Obviously you have a degree, mm -hmm. uh -huh. so why didn't you just dust up your certificate and then get a job? I mean, over a hundred auditions, how? Yeah, because, you know, I knew what I was going for. I knew that I was good enough, first and foremost. Okay. I, I knew in my heart that I was good enough. I just knew maybe it would take some time because mm -hmm. I wasn't under the illusions that I, at the time, or even as of now, I wasn't under the illusions that, oh, I had come into the industry as the best actor, the finished product. I was under the impression that I would learn on the job and I just needed mm -hmm. to get a head start. So I knew that um, regardless of all the knows that I was getting, that uh, if I was persistent enough, if I was passionate enough, and if I just kept going, it would one day happen for me. And um, also, I had, a, I had some jobs along the way okay, who, yeah. that were helping me, you know, keep the faith, you know, working as uh, certain things just to hold body and soul while the acting thing wasn't working, you know. Okay, so can we talk about your jobs, like? So? The jobs you, were, you had before, mm -hmm. you know, while you were going for audition, mm -hmm. what kind of job? Oh, I was a TV presenter for a prominent um, station in Lagos, in Nigeria as a whole. I, was, I, was, I worked in furniture. I used to build kitchens for um, a company as well. Oh, then wow. um, I was a producer. I used, to, I used to write and produce a show for an online publication. You know, things like that. Those sort of like, and also mm -hmm. I used to host, used to do like little... Uh, hosting gigs here and there as well oh, wow. to help me out. Okay, fine. 
when was a turning point in Nollywood, that first movie that made you mm. feel like, yes, I think this is going to work out? Um, you know, I had a little bit of, it, was, it wasn't like a big, oh, she's okay. going to work out. I had like <laughs> small, small, step by step. Yeah, small, small revelations in terms of the movies I was doing. So I was doing a lot of movies and, um, you know, a few were picking interest here and there, here and there, here and there. You know, I had a small role in a big African magic show. And um, that gave me a, that gave me small mileage in terms of visibility. Uh, what show was that? Uh, Forbidden. Oh, okay. That gave me some mileage mm -hmm. in terms of visibility. Some people, you know, it wasn't a big role, but I was just always there on there, the screen. Yeah. I was like, ah, <laughs> this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. Yeah. Then, um, you know, that uh, passed. I had other roles and um, some other tiny roles that gave me visibility, and then started being called for better jobs. Then I got um, I got uh, was it? I, I think I also had Game On. I okay. think that was my first. No, I had a Man of Her Dreams okay. on YouTube. Oh wow! That was a Victor Sanchez Agawa production. That gave me like a bit of mileage as well in terms of the online streaming consciousness. Okay. And then I, you know, started picking up. I got um Game On for Danny TV. Oh. I got Recordy for Dan Russet. I got um, uh, you know, uh, what's it called? I got some other things, by the way. And um, in the, in terms of my career highlights, it's only in the past, I would say, two years, two three years since I've been working in Hollywood that um. You know, I've been seeing like, you know, at the time, the previous years, it would be like, oh, you're making, 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 did, 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 yeah. did. Uh -huh. But in the past, by the grace of God, in the past couple of years, it's been like a steady upwards trajectory for me. So, so, yeah. now you're so a bunch of things. Smart Money Woman went on Netflix. Yeah. Smart wow. Money Woman went on Netflix. So global audience for that one. Wow. Uh -huh. So now you're a full time actor. Yes. Can I, may I ask? Yeah. Truly, how lucrative is acting in Hollywood? Because we hear a lot of things people say. Yeah. They kind of, um, on, on, especially on the gram, you know, on the Instagram, you, you see how lavish most actors are, both yeah. male and female, and then you hear people say, no, they're not that well paid. So I want to know, how lucrative is acting in Hollywood? Well, you should tell me. Why? <laughs> You should tell me. You, you pay actors. Tell me. What do you pay us? Oh, my goodness. What no, do you pay this us? This from Actors View now. No, yeah, producer. What do you pay us? You're the one who you pay us now. What do you pay us? <laughs> tell your audience. What do you pay us? Do you pay us well? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> no, tell me. shot myself. Yeah, do you pay us well? If you pay us well, let us know. Oh, well. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> we pay as much as we can. Okay. As much as, oh, okay, I guess then we earn as much as we can. Yeah, I mean, not, yeah. But, okay, okay. Now, what I'm trying to get at is a lot of people, mm -hmm. other, most of us in the industry, we have our industry secrets mm -hmm. that we are maintaining. Yes, industry secrets. <laughs> but the life that we, industry practitioners, live on the social media, do you think it is real compared to what is obtainable? Um... I feel like so the life people portray on social media is obtainable. Okay. It just depends on your level, what okay. you're doing, your, um, your current status. You know, as a matter of fact, people don't portray their bad times on social media. They yeah. portray only the good times. So you can't expect, um, even though somebody poses as such today or maybe mm -hmm. has a couple of things here and there mm -hmm. today, you can't expect sometimes that might not be their day-to-day -day yeah. lifestyle or existence. You get what I mean? But I feel like it is obtainable, you know. Yeah. Nollywood is growing every day. Yeah. Uh, Nollywood is growing every day. It's like, it's, it's expanding. People yeah. are earning more and more. And yeah. more. I think it's a great time to be an actor mm -hmm. um, because you know fees. I, to be honest, when I started acting, the fees were appalling. Yeah. Still are appalling in some cases today. But you know, the more you grow, the more you get to be in bigger publications, mm -hmm. the more you get to be in bigger movies, the more your stock increases. Yeah. So it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, I think it's, it's not the most lucrative gig. As a matter of fact, um, like um, Daniel Ria, he said one time, I heard him say that acting is a poor man's business. Sorry, not even acting. Entertainment in general, maybe. You just have to have the passion, the passion for yeah. it because... I was telling somebody the other day that if I was a practicing lawyer, I certainly 
I, for, I certainly anymore. would be rich. Wow. That's for certain. I, I certainly, because like the kind of lawyer I intended to be, mm -hmm. or the kind I know I would have been, I mean, because if I wanted to be, I would have yeah. been, the kind of lawyer I knew I would have been, I would have probably been, I would have been a, like a highly successful lawyer. But yeah. acting, uh, depending on who you are, depending on your status in the industry, depending on the grounds you stand on, your yeah. principles, if you're not willing to accept less for what you think you're worth, mm -hmm. and trust me, acting is not going to give you what you're worth. You just have to get to a point where you accept what you think will just not make you unhappy. Yeah. It's not the most lucrative gig, but depending on your level and where you get to, it could be sustainable. Yes. That's the word, I think. Yeah. But, you know, you guys should pay us more. Mm. Okay, people, I hope that you have been learning a lot from us so far and that we have entertained you. And we'll go for a short break. Please don't go anywhere because when we come back, we'll be getting a little bit more personal. <laughs> to Amber World. I'm still here with Esu TK and I'm going to start this um, segment by asking um, tell me a little bit about your background where you came from, your parents, you know. Yeah, um, I'm from Kuala in Delta States. Okay. Yes, but I was born and raised in Benin. Both my parents are teachers. I am the second of four children. I have three siblings, I have two brothers and one sister. I went to the University of Benin, in a bed, and I studied law, okay. <laughs> and I went to law school in Africa. So that's a little bit about my mom. So is this what you get married? That's what he is a man. <laughs> okay, yeah, I have to ask that one. What does that mean to ask? <laughs> so how do you relax when you're acting? When you're not acting? Uh, when I'm not acting, I like to stay in the house. I don't know, people usually think that uh, because you are in the uh, view in the spotlight that you have to be just carry batting up and down the place. But no, when I'm not acting, I like spending quality time in my house, just sleeping and watching movies or just going. I like going to the beach as well. But quality time with myself, uh, with my brother, my dog. I have a dog, his name is Kobe. You know, just being at home, playing table yeah. tennis, uh, watching a nice movie, just, I'm just conversing. I like chilling in my house. I like serenity. Oh. I like the beach. I like going to watch movies and stuff like that as well. Oh, okay. So, uh, can you tell us on the show, like, three secrets that no one knows about you? Three things that no one knows about you. They don't have to be Three things about you that no one knows about you. Uh, I don't do a lot of interviews. I don't think that. I don't think. Okay. And, uh, I, I share a lot of secrets and also I wouldn't share secrets because they are secrets for you. Yeah. Uh, what people people do not know, like I said, both my parents are teachers, people don't know that. People don't know that I'm six feet four inches tall. Wow. People don't Impressive. know that. Um, Why do you think people don't know? Anyone see you? No, I mean you don't know the exact. I'll give you the exact figures. I don't want that you love to me. Exactly. <laughs> no, no, sorry, not exactly. But <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. People don't know that. Uh, people don't know that. That I was born and raised in Benin. But people like when I tell people, I'm like, how do you expect people from Benin to talk? Like we have that side, but I'm refined. You know, <laughs> I'm refined. Yes. Yeah, that side is very deep somewhere. But when people say, oh yeah, yeah, from that, that makes sense. So what's you, what's the trigger for that side? I guess you know when you find out <laughs> it. it's, yeah, I mean, I'm an actor now, I'm in the public act, how should I talk? I mean, I'm refined. Mm. Yeah, but you know, there was a time. Until when, someone steps on the There was a time, there was a time. People, when I say I'm from the never, like, you went to your neighbor, like, I'm 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 like,
I think the biggest issue this country needs to fix is the issue of transparency, you know, because, you know, today somebody will come out and say a lion eats uh, how many million naira today, tomorrow is a snake, next tomorrow is a monkey, <laughs> the day after that it's, um, you know, aliens from space did this. <laughs> it's just a crazy dynamic. So I think personally the first thing I would fix, not the most important thing, just the yeah. first thing that pops in my head at this moment would be the light issue because I'm personally fighting the light issue as the rest of the country is. Yeah. We're fighting, there's no light, the prices of diesel have flown up, the, uh, there's no fuel, at least you have to queue to get, so there's just a lot of things going on. So maybe lights, just to you know, shed some lights on the people. Maybe that would increase happiness before we tackle other things. But I think the most important thing is transparency. People need to be transparent. Okay, just one more serious question. Mm -hmm. What would you do to fix Hollywood if you're in the position to? Nollywood? I like Hollywood because Nollywood. You are, you're speaking about my... <laughs> yes, because to be honest, what you're saying is actually just manifest... Because what I'm saying in my life is manifesting because I was just talking about Hollywood and, just, and I'm applying for something okay. concerning Hollywood. So you just I see Hollywood has been in your lips throughout this interview. Yeah, so there's understand. a reason for that. You they see things. <laughs> okay. There's a reason for that. So what would I do to fix Nollywood? Oh my god. I don't know. I don't want to I don't know. I don't want to say anything <laughs> no, because you know, I don't mm -hmm. know. But you know, we still have a every industry, I think every industry has things to do mm -hmm. that will get it fixed. I feel like um Nollywood also, we can do with a little bit of transparency as well. Yeah. The way our country can do with transparency, I feel like Nollywood could do with that as well. Yeah. yeah. All right, thank you. So, um, obviously, you're good looking. Thank you. So, take us through what it takes to look like you, to be you. Honestly, I'll tell you for free. Okay. That takes absolutely nothing to be. I'm, I'm one of those, I'm very lucky in terms of life and genes that I don't need to do. I do absolutely next to nothing in terms of skincare routine. I've become better recently that I've uh, I, you know, started using some natural soaps and face wash <laughs> yeah. and everything. But before that, nothing. I mean, I barely even used to wash my face before I go to bed <laughs> and I eat so much granots and I just do the worst things. But yeah. I am very active in terms of sports. Oh, wow. I play a lot of sports. I play football, basketball, I play tennis in my house. I play, uh, I run, jog, go to the gym, things like that. So maybe that is one of the things that's helping me. But in terms of skincare routine, people ask me all the time, oh, your skin? I'm like, and I'm just like, mm -hmm. <laughs> absolutely nothing. But I feel like one of the things that I want to do more this year, I've actually made one of my resolutions to be more steadfast in skincare and actually invest more in skincare. Because if people tell me my skin looks okay and I look okay without even doing so much to do. Mm -hmm. Imagine when I put some effort. So okay. I'm going to put some more effort into skincare. I'm going to like go to one of these natural places, spend all the money, buy some hyaluronic acid, buy uh, face scrubs, masks, things like that. <laughs> I'm just going to go out on the whole shebang. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. But honestly, to be honest with you, you don't need them. I, I, yeah, but you know, <laughs> right now, you never know. As yeah. you grow. Oh, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, if you say so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, there are a lot of, you know, younger people who look up to yeah. you by the virtue of what you do. Mm -hmm. So what can you say to them to help them hold on to their dress, especially in this no, uh, would, country? Yeah. <laughs> well, I just, like I always try to say, I just want to, I always preach the value of persistence and consistency, you know, because it's so easy to feel dejected maybe after you don't get picked or don't get cast or don't get things like that and that happened to me so many times but um you have to if you can or if you i mean because at the moment nollywood i don't think we're at a place where if you are trying to get into nollywood you just like abandon except you have somebody leading you straight to the limelight or whatever I don't think we are at a place where you can just abandon everything that you were doing and say, you know, let me focus. You have to at least earn some money somewhere mm -hmm. before you start earning money in yeah. Hollywood. So I think if you have a job, uh, that, that, that would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. But persistency and also try to improve, yeah. which I feel personally is one of the things that helped me because I did not enter Hollywood with any ego of being a great or the greatest actor or Absolutely. anything. I was always looking at 
people who were there before me, always looking at my peers, people beside me, always looking at how to improve, always going for classes, always trying to, yeah. you know, regardless of what I had done in the past. I mean, as a matter of fact, I'm just coming off in a new, uh, did a new acting course oh, wow. recently for three months. And mm -hmm. when I was going for that, people were looking at me and said, what are you going to do? They're going to teach or what? I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm going to learn because regardless yeah. of how old I get or how rapid my career is growing, there's always room to learn. So yeah. it's basically the, I would like to talk about the importance of consistency, persistence, and you know, never being too grown or too big yeah. to learn. To learn, yeah. Yeah, so that's what, it, that's what worked for me and I hope it works for people. You know, try not to take things too personal because there are going to be a lot of no's there might not be a lot of no's, though, depending. You're, you know, everybody's mm. career trajectory doesn't have to be. <laughs> that's one thing, because people feel like, oh, somebody has suffered, another person has to suffer. That's one yeah. of the things that Nollywood needs to change, by the way. Yeah. Because people think, oh, I suffered like this, another person. I mean, yeah, like, I why, would, well, why would you suffer if dues. not to clear the road and make it easier for the people coming, coming behind, behind you? Yeah. you. I, don't, I don't, personally, I don't like that, oh, yeah, it went like this for me, it should go like this for you, no. So, I mean, I hope, hopefully everything is easy, breezy for everybody yeah. coming, but it might not be that way for some people. And if it's not that way for you, what you can do is, um, you know, persevere, um, yeah. you know, persist regardless of how bad it is. All right, thank you very much, Yusuf, for thank coming you. to the show. Thank you. All right, people, we've come to the end of the show. And um, I've been wonderfully inspired, and I hope that I've also entertained you and you've learned one or two things about our industry. So please, um, for now, bye. See you next week on Same Station. Bye. <laughs> I've been moving calm, no startled for me. Don't pull up at 6 a.m. Anything you guys want in the store is free, so grab whatever you guys want. I don't wanna die for them to miss me.